Our first guest tonight is one of the busiest men in football, especially in this offseason. He turned Weber State into an FCS national power. He's now in Provo to make BYU a contender in the Big 12. It's our pleasure to welcome Jay Hill to the Wise Guys. Coach, thanks for being with us tonight. No problem. How are you? Good. Are you out under the stars? You know what? I uh, I am. I was in my truck and it was so dark. I'm at a. I'm out recruiting, so I got to be careful that I don't let anyone know where I'm at. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the GPS I was, off. I was in my truck and it was so dang dark that um, I didn't think it was going to come through. So I went to go inside, and now it's so loud in there that that's not the place to do it. So I'm. I'm looking for a better spot. Well, this, You're looking this, for a lighted, quiet place somewhere remote. We get it. Hey. Well, well, I apologize because I'm. I have to be at this uh, game. Um, anyway, but I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find somewhere sweet. Well, it looks so. good right now. It, it just keep walking, and if you're in a safe neighborhood, we're we're, we're in great shape. This is live. Yeah, that would this give is a clue, live action. Are you in a safe neighborhood or not a safe neighborhood? <laughs> well, I'm in a safe neighborhood, and I've got enough light here that we can pull this off if I have to. Oh, yeah, we can. We can see. That we can looks see good. good there now, where there's where there's more light. So, hey, okay. if you were I'll, home, I'll just, you're in studio with I'll us. I'll just do this. We we always good. tease. Um, we always say, hey, we're coming to you from a studio in an undisclosed location in Provo for our safety. You always tell them that. So we'll, you will also be from an undisclosed location. This week, I'm in a disclosed location because I'm far away <laughs> that nobody can bother me. I'm in Hawaii sitting looking out at the waves at Turtle Bay while we do the show today. Oh, good for you. That's where I should be. Actually, I was there last week. We were out. Um, we were on, on the island for the funeral and then and then later for recruiting. So, Yeah. Yeah, I, I just drove I drove by Kahuku High School this afternoon and I and we, we kind of went through all those great players. Then we started to talk about St. Louis High School and Punahou and thinking about how many great players um, have come to Utah and BYU and Utah State from from these islands over here. It's really been remarkable how much talent has, has come from from Polynesia and from Hawaii in, in particular. Yeah, no doubt. There's uh there there are so many good players out there and Really, it was such a, a stopping ground for all the players coming from, you know, Tonga and Samoa and all the islands. And then they would stop there for a little bit. Um, and, and they just they were the beneficiaries of such great talent, you know, stopping through there. So if you had to describe uh, the last two months of your life by a type of storm, uh, would it be a tornado a hurricane <laughs> or a blizzard? Oh, geez. All of them combined. <laughs> uh, typhoon, throw a typhoon in there. Uh, it's been crazy, you know, just trying to get used to what we do here at BYU and um, trying to get the recruits, you know, get, get on the recruiting path. And then you're trying to learn the team that you currently have. And we went to, uh, you know, we went to the bowl game and then there was a dead period that you're still trying to figure out who your players are, but you're not around them and figure out who the recruits are, but you're not around them. And, and then it went back live again. And it was crazy just how busy we've been the last week and a half or so, but you know, that's coaching. That's this time of year. Um, and, and you know, it's what we sign up for. It's what we love. Before you came on coach, we were, we were talking about how it just feels like this is such a great fit. I mean, for those of us on the BYU side, um, you just look at it and we all go, yeah, Jay just feels like he should have been here all along. This is a perfect fit for him. Um, I don't know if it feels like that to you already, but I'm, I'm wondering what you've been most impressed with in your short time at BYU. Uh, resources are outstanding. Uh, administration, I've been very happy with them. Uh, Kalani's outstanding. Part of the, I mean, probably the biggest reason why I took this job is just my relationship with Kalani and our ability to come in here and do it the way that I, I really feel that will bring us success in recruiting and how we coach. Um, yeah, th there's so much. The fans, the fans are crazy, and and in a good sense. Uh, you know, we go through the airport recruiting the other day, and it's like you get swarmed. and And I go, I go to a high school basketball games recruiting, and the little kids just come up to you left and right, and they want to shake your hand. They know who you are. Their parents have educated them on what's going on, and Anyway, bottom line, um, the fans are outstanding. Uh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium is something we have to offer. I've been super excited taking recruits through there and just what it looks like. 
uh, bottom line, I've always known the institution had a lot to offer. And the, the more in it I am, the more excited I get. Let's talk about, before we get to your staff, and hey, first of all, when's this game start so we have you in there on time? No, yeah, I'll be there. Don't don't worry about me. I'll get there. <laughs> okay. Okay. We will, If you got a hard stop, you let us know when you got to go. We'll let you go. <laughs> no, we're uh, good. Before we get to the guys you've brought in, let's talk about Sarah, uh, your CEO of, of, of your life, and she's been a fighter and have fought through so much. Uh, you left your comfort zone at Weber State to come take on this new challenge. How much... Uh, of of her and her influence on you uh, is there to get you to just get out of your comfort zone and take this on? Well, she's amazing. And you you mentioned her. She's a fighter. Uh, she's so tough. But the hardest thing about this transition was probably her because she loved those players up there at Weber State so much. And um, she, put, she puts her whole heart and soul into everything she does. And and she did it into Weber State and those players. And, and that's been a hard transition for her. Not, not that she's not super excited about BYU because she is, but leaving behind those players that she was so close to was very difficult. Um, and, you know, it was for me too. It, that's just, that's the nature, unfortunately, of the business that you leave one. And, and now we get to inherit another 120 guys that will be like family to us. Uh, the, the fun part is now is getting to know them and, and she'll do a, fabulous job with them as well it, one of the things jay that um not a lot of people know the word starting to get out but when you and i talked when you first came down i think maybe the first day or second day you were down at practice um was the fact that you grew up in lehigh and you actually grew up in a byu house where you were a byu guy because i think if everybody just thinks well jay hill he's got such a long history at utah he um you know he's a utah guy but it all started out at BYU. It seems right for you to come home where you where you grew up in that type of a household. I did. I, I grew up in Lehigh. My parents went to BYU. Um, I remember growing up, my dad was a seminary teacher. And so, you know, he still had benefits of my mom going to school at BYU. And we'd get tickets to the games and things like that. And uh, I remember going to BYU football games. And what I most remember is the Marriott Center. And the basketball games, because I don't, I don't know why we we just seem to go to those more than, even than the football games. But it was fun the other day. We went back to the Gonzaga game <laughs> against BYU in the Marriott Center, and that atmosphere was just unbelievably good. And it was fun to be back in there. I'll bet it had been thirty years since I'd been to a game, maybe more. Wow, Coach, why was Sione Puhua such an important hire for your defensive line? Well, I think he does as good a job coaching those guys as anybody. Uh, he's got a strong presence just with the way he looks and who he is and um, the way he talks. The He just demands respect. Uh, he does the same when you're, when you're out recruiting with him. The, the kids absolutely love him because he relates well to them. But he also knows how to push them. Um, like I say, uh, when he walks in a room, he looks like a big time NFL guy still. And uh, he just demands that respect and he has that strong presence. Um, he's a phenomenal recruiter. I got to see him as a player when I was a young coach. I got to coach him and um, I just I've loved him ever since. And uh, his repu reputation precedes him. And, and for good reason, he's been outstanding since we've hired him. And I'm sure he's part of this, but you picked up a couple of kids in the portal. They're going to help that D line that he's going to be um, charged with with coaching up. Uh, Jackson Cravens, Isaiah uh, Bagna, both from Boise State. Um, how will they fit in? And is this a is this a really important area that you guys feel like you need to build that defensive line? We do. We got to bolster that D line. You know, I, I really believe good defense always starts with stopping the run. And if you don't have enough guys up front that can do it, then you better go out and find more. And so th those were two real critical uh, takes at mid-year. They're on campus. They look really good right now. They've been in a tough program. I, I, uh, I trust and respect the way that the Boise State coaches do things. Uh, quite frankly, um, not every guy that comes out of the portal is ready to go and will make an impact. But I like the Boise State guys. I like the way they've been coached. And I think they'll fit the culture well of what we're trying to do. Hey, my, my favorite thing, Jay, is, is that Jackson's Kyle's nephew, Kyle Whittingham's nephew. So, <laughs> so Yeah, how about that? I know, it's amazing. So so Julie, Kyle's 
if people don't know the connection, Julie Kyle's um, younger sister um, is Jackson Craven's mom. And, yeah. uh, you know, Julie grew up in a BYU house, too. I lived at that house. I lived with Kyle and Carrie and those guys. And Julie was running around as a 10-year-old when we were there. And so I couldn't be more pleased that Kyle's nephew is coming to work with you guys at BYU. That's kind of fun, that connection. It is fun. And it was fun for me to see Julie in the office uh, back when we were recruiting Jackson and um, and, and Jackson's dad. I mean, b- bottom line, it's a great family to have part of the program. And, you know, the Whittingham family is so special to both programs, not just not just BYU, obviously, to Utah as well. And and they are a super special family and always will be in the in the state of Utah as far as football goes. BYU defensive coordinator Jay Hills on the Wise Guys tonight around the world, live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and wiseguys.com. Former Cougar Justin Enna is your linebacker's coach. He inherits Ben Bywater and Max Tooley. How can Enna make them and the others better? Well, Justin brings another. He's, a, he's another strong presence. Uh, was a great player. Uh, himself. Uh, I I was able to work with him at Weber State. He was actually my first defensive coordinator when I took the job at Weber State and fired up for Justin because we've worked together. I know his toughness. I know his discipline. He's another guy that you take into a room recruiting and he kind of lights it up, does a great job in recruiting, always was very detailed. And uh, bottom line, I love uh, his presence, I love what he adds. He's another hammer on the defense. He will demand respect, and he'll demand that the players do it the right way. Um, anyway, bottom line, um, he, he's going to add a lot to this defense and what we're trying to accomplish. Hey, Coach, you got former Cougar Kelly Papinga also on the staff that's going to coach special teams and the edge rushers. I know you don't, haven't – I don't think you've coached directly with Kelly in the past, but he comes directly from that Boise State program. You just talked about how well they do – getting kids ready what what does justin or, or what does kelly papinga bring um to the table on this defensive staff for you well kelly was more about what he did at byu and again he was a great player but uh what who he coached and what he represent represented in recruiting and at that time i was still at utah recruiting against him and you know coaching against him and his, his players were just always so prepared so ready to go uh, you know, in the last 10 years, he's maybe recruit, or recruited and coached the best players, you know, in BYU's defense the last 10 years, the the Taki Takis, the Van Oys, the Fred Warners. I mean, those guys were Kelly Papinga recruits and guys he coached. So, I mean, just getting him and his presence back here at BYU was huge. In the secondary, you have the safeties, and Gennaro Guilford has the corners. Guilford retained from that defensive group as you've kind of put everyone back together. Uh, what do you think's allowed Gennaro to be so successful, both as a recruiter and as a coach back there? Well, it, again, I keep I keep mentioning presence, but I think it's an important word with football coaches is that when they walk in a room, they demand the respect that um, that's required to get the most out of these players and. Again, he was a great player. He does a good job communicating techniques and schemes. Uh, I remember early on in in my career as a head coach, I went against his secondaries when he was at Southern Utah, and he was putting out NFL guys at Southern Utah. And if you look at, I believe, one of the strengths last year in the last couple years of BYU's defense was actually the secondary. And I don't know that people have always thought BYU defense in terms of that, but at least the last little bit they have. And I think Gennaro's done a good job of recruiting the right guys and staying on top of his guys the way it's required to have success. And, um, you know, all those reasons were the big reasons why we wanted to keep him and, and why he's with us. And we're, we're not going to ask Jay to comment because uh, we know that's a weird, it's weird for me to ask this, but I am going to say this so people know. I'm excited that my youngest son gets to work with Jay with the secondary, and he's so excited to learn from Jay. It's like he's, like, I'm telling him he's got the greatest job in the world. He, he'll leave at 7 in the morning, come home at 11 at night, and he's so ready to go back because he's so excited to get a chance to work with these guys. So I, I'm just going to leave it at this, Jay. I appreciate you taking him under your wing and taking care of my guy, Gavin. Heck, yeah, Gavin's doing a great job. And, you know, the crazy the thing is we still have yet to do much with those guys because we've been out on the road recruiting or we were in that dead period. And um, anyway, bottom line, I'm super excited. We get back in the office next week and it will be 
we'll be uh, just going as hard as we can trying to get this defense ready and he'll be right next to me all all along the way so I'm, I'm excited about him well he he had a free pass to come to Hawaii with me this week and he turned us down turned the whole family down because he said he had to be in the <laughs> office and, and, and needed to grind I so I respect him for doing that that's for sure so well his time will come where he gets to take those vacations <laughs> I remember being a young coach too having to do the same thing so that's that's part of the process yeah hey spring practice just six weeks away coach and and a chance for you to really roll up your sleeves and, and, and dig in with this defense for you, what will constitute a good spring for the defense? Uh, fundamentals and technique. I believe it's all about that. You know, if we can become better tacklers, if we can learn to get off the ball better as defenders, use our hands better in the D line, you know, play with pad level a little bit better. Obviously we got to learn the scheme. You know, you can't go out there and function if you're just making a bunch of mistakes, but I would say it starts with fundamentals and techniques, and then uh, the better we can get at the scheme in the spring, the better off we'll be in the fall. Um, it will give us a better starting point when we get to fall camp. Defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Jay Hill on the Wise Guys. Now we can see your breath, so let us know when hypothermia sets in. Ah, I know, just... that's weird. Uh, I feel bad that we're doing it like this. I guess it's kind of cool. It's a different setting than probably Oh, yeah, most it's perfect for us. <laughs> Absolutely. You're the first we've ever had, like, just, outdoors. Like, you, that's awesome. We don't want you to get the flu or anything uh, no, I'm not. If, if I do, then that's my own stupidity. So <laughs> We just have a few more questions for you. We're still waiting for the Big 12 schedule. It sounds like next Tuesday is what is being kicked around. Um, what will you be looking for when that schedule is finally released? Mm, honestly, not. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> – I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll get on obviously scouting the first opponent or two in that deal and and taking a peek at the top teams in the conference and, and you know what they're all about offensively. But the the reality is, I don't think that that's going to change much the process that we do. We got to have a great spring ball. We got to get the defense installed. We got to have a great summer of conditioning and getting the players to the best shape that they can be in. Uh, I don't know that the release of the schedule is going to impact too much what we do. We have a pretty specific process in place that we do. This this, this league, Jay, is uh, is an interesting league. Sometimes I wonder if they even care about defense in that league. There are a couple of teams <laughs> in play, but but it's just like you, you look at the scores every week, and it's like, really, you just won seventy seven to sixty four like crazy. Is that a basketball game? So so knowing what you you know about that league and the way they love offense. What, what, what's the key for this defense? What are the things that are going to ground you and, and make you guys um, one of the best defenses in that league? Well, expectations. You know, I, I know one thing. I ain't going into the game being content with giving up 45 points a game or whatever some of those defenses do. That I mean, that we got to raise the level of expectation no matter who we play. Uh, that will be a big deal. And then, you know, we, like I say, we want to go in fundamentally better than the other teams. And, and I really believe in our scheme. Uh, it's time tested. It's proven at every level. And so I know the scheme will work. We just got to make sure we put the players in the best position possible and make sure we do a good job of fundamentals and technique. Speaking of players, uh, one of your All-Americans up at Weber State has followed you here. He's in school and settling in, talking about defensive back Eddie Heckard. What does he bring to that group? Well, you know, I love Eddie, and, and I've been with him for a long time. He brings toughness, tenacity, work ethic. He, he, was, he was one of those players that had an opportunity to go to the NFL last year and thought by sticking around one more year could uh, improve his draft status. Uh, but he's got to come in and earn it. And I've told him, you're coming into a different program. And just because I coached you at Weber State, you got to earn it. You got to earn your starting spot. You got to earn your playing time. You got to earn the things that he feels he needs to be able to have a shot at the NFL. But it can't be given to him. And there can be no, um, you know, favoritism or anything like that because uh, I coached him before. The only thing he's got above maybe some of the other guys is that he's played in the defense and played in something similar. And so, you know, does he have some advantages coming in? Maybe. Uh, I know what he's all about. I know how he reacts to adversity. I know how uh, the harder the game, the bigger the game, the better he plays. And that's a hallmark of all great players. Well, we, we've heard a lot of stories, and we've talked about a bunch of them on this show and others that we host, about Kalani closing the deal on recruits. We know he's a great recruiter, and there's all these great stories about, well, he closed the deal by doing this or doing that. So, so Dave and I were wondering – how did he close the deal on you to get you to come and leave that head job there and come to BYU? What was the deal? 
Oh, you know what? There, there was so much that went into it. I don't, I don't know what it was. Uh, it just felt like the last year that my time at Weber state was coming to a close. And I liked Kalani's sales pitch. Obviously he did a phenomenal job of trying to convince me on what we can build at BYU and the, the assets that BYU has to help us win going into the big 12 was a huge deal. But as much as anything is just getting back with, you know, Aaron Roderick on the other side of the ball was a huge selling point. Fessy Satake and Steve Clark being there who I've coached with before was a huge selling point. And then Kalani giving me free reign to go out and hire who I wanted to on defense. And, you know, he, he was in a, a total agreement with who we hired, but that uh, autonomy that I had to go hire these guys and get the ones we wanted at BYU and, and get the best fit was huge. And, you know, again, Kalani, is a salesman and he did a great job with it, but I'm excited to work with him and I'm excited about where the program can get with, you know, him at the helm and us going in the big 12. I think that that's a huge deal. We've got five quick questions for you, but before we get to that, so how did the first phone call go? Kalani calls you up uh, and you know, what, what happens to, how does the words, <laughs> Hey, are you ready to come down here? Come out basically what you just said um you know I, I i think he said basically that you know we want you down here we think it can be a great deal he said i don't care if you turn me down five times i'm going to keep calling you so um he was persistent um but he, he didn't have to oversell he knew i knew what byu was all about he knew i knew what he's all about and again with aaron roderick and and the other guys so involved in this program, I was excited to join them. And there wasn't a lot of selling that had to be done. He, he, he did a good job of just pointing out the positives and, and you know, trying, trying together, trying to build this thing the way we know it can be. That's great. All well, right, we've, got, we've got five quick questions for you. We do these with, with every guest just so everybody gets to know them a little bit better. So you're not supposed to think about them. You're supposed to answer them, whatever comes to the top okay. of your head. Okay. First one. Your favorite sports movie? Mm. Oh, probably like Michael Jordan, Come Fly With Me. Something like that way back then. Nice. Uh, he goes old school. That is here. old yeah. school. Come Fly favorite With Me. Favorite singer or band? Mm. Good one. Oh, I'm not much of a music guy. I would say like... Uh, What's Sarah's? Let's go with Sarah's favorite. If you if you favorite. don't favorite, I don't even know what I should know her favorite too. <laughs> are, you, are you like uh, a country I, family? Are you a hip hop family? Are you? You know what? I, that's what that's my problem is I listen to everything from reggae to rock to country to everything. I would say something like old rock, like a Creedence Clearwater Revival or Dire Straits or something like that. Nice. There's no shame I love in it. that. No shame in that. That's awesome. Hey, you know who used to like Dire Straits, which surprised the heck out of me. Lavelle Edwards. Oh, really? Yeah, I was in his office and he was listening to that one, like, uh, look at them yo yo's, that's the way. And he was listening to that, I'm like, oh, geez. are you listening to that's Dire awesome. Straits? He's like, he's like, yeah, I like Dire Straits. Willie Nelson and Dire Straits for Coach Lavelle. That's cool. So I like Lavelle even more now. Yeah. I mean, is that, hey, the fact that you like the same band that Lavelle did, that says something too. That's pretty awesome. So, um, favorite breakfast cereal? Mm, like granola for the love oh, did you just man, say granola healthy? we got a bad connection because i think you said granola i Is thought he said granola yeah, i said i said, said granola i think you said apple jacks or fruit like, like, i think he said <laughs> granola maybe so now, do, now we know he's lying do you spice it up <laughs> or do you just take it straight he, no he just I threw the know. healthy one out at us when he knows he likes fruit loops i swear the dilemma is i don't eat cereal so oh okay okay Okay, your favorite Kalani Satake moment that you guys have had. It doesn't have to be in football, but any moment you've had with Kalani that you think back and go, that 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 is my favorite or one of my favorites ever with Kalani. Well, it, it would have to be probably the Sugar Bowl um, back in 2008. Um, and I, I think that was with that entire staff. That was such an unbelievable moment. And to share that together with him and A-Rod and those guys, that, I would say that's probably the best. People might disagree with me. I think it's the best team utah's ever put on the field that was i think they could have been anybody that year anybody yeah, so we were really good at the end of the year we were playing as good as anybody for sure yep and the last one um your favorite piece of advice 
from your daughter Ashton, who Dave and I worked with a bunch when she was down as a student working with us at BYU TV. We <laughs> love her. We want to know what the favorite piece of advice she gave you when you took the job at BYU, having been a BYU veteran herself. <sighs> you know, I don't know if she gave me any advice other than she just. Hmm, I don't. I, I don't know if it's advice. Um, I know she. Uh, well. You know what? She went all into BYU, and for her to switch from such a huge Utah fan to BYU and yeah. her going all in, I guess that was – I don't know if it's advice, but it at least showed me that we could do the same. And So I'll, I guess I'll say that. Just her example would be her advice. She's great. She sat right next to Dave and I all basketball season, making sure we did the right things as our as our floor director during basketball season for all those games. We loved working with her. Well, She's on, the greatest. On occasion, we'd say nice things about you – in our BYU broadcast, <laughs> we were helping with the recruiting process all those years ago. Yes, for sure. So uh, she's she's pretty amazing. So yeah. Hey, coach. Now well, we we're, know we're we're thrilled to have you and your whole family um, part of the BYU family. It's um, and that's the way it is. When when you come down, you know how it is, Jay. Wherever you go, the whole family comes with you, and we're yeah. we're we're glad to just be another another group that that welcomes you on and tells you we're thrilled to have you here. Well, we're th we're thrilled to be here. Now we got to bring the success that everyone's expecting, and I, I look forward to that. So, hey, now we know that when your defense comes out all agitated and aggressive and tearing the other team apart, it's because you had granola for breakfast that morning. <laughs> granola and Red Bull. <laughs> and granola Red Bull. and Red there Bull. There you go, <laughs> Coach. Safe travels wherever you are, as, and we look forward to seeing you back here in Provo. Thanks for joining the show and spring uh, camp just around the corner, and, and we're all excited about it. And uh, appreciate yeah. uh, appreciate you. Thank Thanks, you. I Jay. appreciate you guys. Thank you. Now go warm, up. go warm up. Okay, we'll do. All right. There's Jay Hill just somewhere. In a, I don't even know if we can. I don't even know if he's in America. He's somewhere. Well, he but says it was he's cold enough where he could see. It. it was cold enough where you could see his breath, and yet he answered every one of our questions uh, under the streetlight, and uh, yeah, that's how he rolls. That's hey. There's never been a question about Jay's commitment to anything, right? He he's about being committed and and being and being passionate and. He knew he was going to have to find a different place. The truck wasn't working. He's out contri contri uh, recruiting. He had committed to come on with us, so he just found a quiet spot in the cold outdoors under a light someplace and just spent a half an hour with us. What yeah, and What more do we need to say about Jay Hill? That was pretty awesome. That's the kind of guy you can count on in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. Um,